Welcome, welcome. Welcome back to the Hardcore Podcast. I'm your host, Robert Melton. And I'm your host, Christopher Norwood. Co-host, Christopher Norwood. Unfreaking believable This is episode 86, and we're going to be talking about some Nintendo Direct, some games we didn't mention last week on the Summer's Games Fest, um, things we've been doing, and... Whatever else in between. So let's get this party jumping. Come on, monsters. You better get jumping. <laughs> I regret it. Have you seen the um the like AI vines? Mm-mm. It's like the vines, but like they use AI and it like makes them different. Mm-mm. Oh, I gotta, I gotta show you some of them. But they're, it's like the classic vines. Yeah, it's the classic vines, and they they're using AI to like manipulate them to where it's like a almost like a multiverse where different things happen. Oh shit! Yeah, but it, <laughs> it's like very like dystopian and weird and like uncanny mm. and kind of scary actually. Oh damn! Very horror esque, but um, yeah, I'll have to show you a few. Uh, I could probably pull some up, but we'll do it if we have time. Okay. Um, but what have you been up to, buddy? How's your week been? Um, week's been pretty good. Um, this past Sunday was Father's Day. Did a little bit of golfing. Oh yeah, I think that's like tradition now. So I'll go golfing once a year, but it's fun. Get any hole in ones? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, shoot, I forgot the term. Par. No, Birdie. no, it's it's like a type of hit. Um, I mean, it's not going to sound cool. It's one of those you had to have been there. But my brother, he got a a, a few really good shots. Mm. My brother's actually pretty solid. Really. Him and his uh his friends that he's been with, well, he's been friends with them um since he since we moved here pretty much. Uh-uh. Um, they're twins. We just call them the twins. <laughs> <laughs> but uh they went we went with them and their dad. And I didn't feel too bad because their dad's never been golfing. Oh really? Yeah. Oh cool, so cool. We were kind of like on the same level. Did your dad go? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Does does he golf a lot? Um, not a lot, but he golfs a decent amount. Oh, he's trying gotcha. to start golfing a little more. He has his own set of clubs now, but he's pretty good. He got some really good shots as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd say my dad. No, I'd say my brother is just like a just a little bit better. Yeah, my dad's pretty solid though. I've been putt putting. Oh, I is love that the same? Um, towards the end of each hole, yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of the times you'll you'll have to. Put the ball right on in. Yeah, I've never actually been golfing. Is it fun? Jaw. Yeah, it's very fun. Have some beers. Yep. You have this uh like beer cart that kind of comes around. Oh, really? Yeah. How much are the beers? Um, it really wasn't too bad. I got just normal kind of what are they? Like twelve ounce cans mm-hmm. of uh yingling for like three bucks. Oh yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah, no, not bad. Hard I, to beat. I definitely um expected them to be a little bit more because this place we went yeah. to was pretty bougie. Like a country club. Yeah. Like, I went there wearing shorts, obviously, um, but I was just wearing Carhartt. Normal t-shirt? Yeah, just like a gray Carhartt shirt, but I had to change yeah. because you, you have to have a polo yep. at these type of places, and I'm like, damn, that's bougie as hell. Should have um, known, dude. I should have, <laughs> but it was fun. Um, 18 holes with six people. It takes a while. Oh, we I can were, imagine. We were out there. How long were you out there? I'd say four to five hours. Okay. Yeah, but it was it was a good time. It was a good time. Yeah, sounds fun. Yeah, I wouldn't mind golfing more. It's just you got to put a lot of time into that to like really get good. Oh yeah. Oh man, a lot of time. It has to pretty much be your only hobby mm-hmm. to get any good. Yeah. Uh, but went golfing. Um, just kind of hanging out with Remus. Uh, did uh, I've been working all week, working a bunch as always, and I did start a new game. Oh. Um. So I originally was kind of feeling some Digimon. <sighs> yeah, that's so true. I, bought I, I forgot the, about uh, that. Digimon World Next Order for like 
it was on sale. I think it was like 20 bucks. I was like, yeah, why not? Um, but then I came across a game, Death's Door. That's what mm. it was called. And that was also on sale for like seven bucks. And that has been a lot of fun. Explain this game to me. So it's pretty much like a kind of like an old school Zelda ish game. And it has some uh, Souls like elements to it. Mm. But it's just uh, like a, well, I was going to say a little indie game, but I think the developer is actually pretty big in the indie scene. Devolver. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the other stuff they make. Yeah, but they make. actually had their own showcase with the uh, summer game, Summer uh, Fest. Yeah, I definitely recognize the name. Dude, you should check out that uh, showcase, though, because it was set up so interestingly. Mm. It was the most unique showcase I've ever seen. But It was eerie. And oh, weird. yeah? But um, they showed off some cool stuff. Um, one thing in particular, um, Cult of the Lamb is coming up with like a co-op update. I did hear about that, yeah. yeah. And that looked really sweet. That does sound cool. But, um, yeah, no, Death Store, it has a lot of charm. You play as like this little crow guy, and you're pretty much... I haven't played too much, so I haven't really gotten to the story or have been able to decipher what all is going on, but I know it's something to deal with. Um, you're like retrieving lost souls. I think you're called a reaper. Your character is called a reaper, and you're like retrieving lost souls. But it has a lot of charm to it. It has a lot of the same kind of Zelda charm. Mm. Um, but it's a little more like dark. Gotcha. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. And that's um, uh, 2D, I assume? No, it's it's uh, it's 3D, but it's kind of like isometric. Okay. Yeah. Um, Somewhat minimal in like graphic style. Yeah, but it's it's still a pretty game. But the music, oh man, the music is amazing. And so far, the um, like the mini bosses and the boss fights have been good. Um, like design concepts have been really good, and it's just very atmospheric. How many uh, hours you got in it so far? No, nah, I'd say probably just like three. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I don't think it's the longest game either. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's pretty much it. We'll definitely get some more. Um, death store in this weekend. Maybe get some. Oh, because I'm on my long break now, so I may get some, some new uh, Elden Ring in as well. Ooh. We'll see. We'll see. See if I'm in the mood. See if um I have my old save, so I don't have to fight Mogan Radon all over again. Because that'd be a pain in the ass. I'm just not in the mood to do that. Like I'm in the mood to play it, but I don't want to do. The shit that I've already done that I know is difficult. Ah. I want to do the shit I haven't done. I mean, you can always cheese it. I know I can at least cheese Moog. Actually, I want to say they patched that part out. All right, then I'm not cheating. I'm, I'm definitely summoning somebody in for sure <laughs> if I do have to go through all that all over. I mean, I think you're high enough level to where you could pretty easily do it. I think it's more so the dread of just like getting there. I don't even think it's that bad. Yeah, I mean, I honestly couldn't even tell you. I don't even really remember. I yeah. know Radon's and Kaylin somewhere. Kaylin, or Kaylid. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember how to get to Moog. Or just that area. I think it's one of like the well springs or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but what about you? Anything new? Oh shit. Um we did kind of have a yeah, yeah like there was board Saturday. game night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had like mm-hmm. a little double date kind of board game night. Yeah, that was we fun. played some Everdell for Everdale. the first time. Everdale, yes. right? Yep, Everdale. Yeah, and that was Riverdale. <laughs> Definitely not that. <laughs> um, but that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed that game. We uh we started it, had somebody who knew how to play it, and the box says I believe it's like forty to eighty minutes a game. Mm-hmm. I think it took us four hours. <laughs> Yeah, and we were kind of. I uh, mean, we were but definitely we were chilling playing for the for the most part. But yeah, there was a uh, no pressure kind of yeah. game. We were yeah. definitely chilling, taking no pressure, and we were just hanging out. So yeah, drinking, going uh, back to the rules. Surprisingly, Everything. you ended up winning. Surprisingly, huh? Well, I mean, just coming from somebody who hasn't played it. Oh yeah, and especially when uh, Elaine, uh, first name drop. Oh, um, she was like. 
I've actually never lost this game. No, oh, she said yeah, that. Yeah, she preface with that. Oof. I don't know if she said I never lost this game or I usually win every time. Damn. Well, it's a good thing that you won because I don't know, man. I don't want to see that side of you come out again. <laughs> and I had uh, prefaced with telling <laughs> her that you were going to fucking hype that up. <laughs> it's like, hey, I am a sore loser, but Robert's going to make it seem like I'm going to break shit. Uh, you know what? In fact, you should hold off on Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Not my new controller. Actually, I don't mind breaking that one. I've had that one for a minute. Uh, if you can't, I don't know if you can see that, but it's one of those like wired 360 controllers, but it's like the smaller one. Mm-hmm. And that, it's, um, what was that brand? Mad Aftershock or Afterglow? Uh, something yeah. like that. It's one of those that like lights up. But uh, yeah, no, worst case scenario, I don't mind breaking that one, but no, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, you should be in the clear. Yeah. You're a pro. You beat the game. I did. I did. With some help, but I did. A lot of people can't say that. Yeah. No, I I mean, even if I cheese it, like, I, I can still say I beat it. Even yeah. with cheesing, it's n- doesn't. It's not like it makes it the easiest game. A lot of, well. Yeah. I'd say a good majority of people who've tried the game get immediately, like, flustered if they haven't played, like, a front so- from soft game. Mm-hmm. Because they're like, how the fuck do I do this? You die, all the monsters are back. Yeah. You know, you, <laughs> you kind of get fucked. You lose everything when you die. Well, especially uh, this one, like if this is like one of your first kind of FromSoft games, like right in the beginning, you see the uh, the tree sentinel yes. on the horse, and you're like, fuck this game. This, this guy the first is brutal. <laughs> yeah. Outside of the tutorial. Because most people are probably like, hey, I'm supposed to beat this guy. Yeah. Which, I mean... You definitely can. You will at some point, but it's not like you're supposed to then and there. Yeah. You know? But that's the game teaching you patience and also <laughs> For real. you don't have to do this at this time. Yeah. Because like, this is like the first true, uh, I guess, open world from soft game. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, you don't have to do everything when you see it. You can come back to anything whenever. Right, right. And this one, yeah. I mean, like, there's a a way, like, a kind of path you should take, but mm-hmm. you can really go wherever you want. Exactly. When you want. Yeah. And obviously, you'll be gatekept by some parts of the game. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I'm know. sorry. I I, um, I think I interrupted you. What have you been up to? Oh, yes. Um, definitely uh, Game Over played some Everdale. We played some Jackbox also. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Mm-hmm. Some good laughs. Um, had a, free, a few brewskis. Um, what else have I been doing this week? Oh, um, The Boys dropped. Oh, the Boys, right. the TV show. Three episodes came out last Thursday for the premiere. Um, when I figured that out, came home from work, binged all of it. Uh, it was great. Can't oh, wait yeah. for more, which I think might be tonight. Definitely won't be doing that tonight. I'll be doing some editing and maybe a little bit of Elton Ring. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, fucking God, I love the boys. House of the Dragon. Yep. House of the Dragon also premiered Sunday. The first episode. Have you watched it? Mm-mm. Oh, Mm-mm. Dude. Crazy. I don't, I don't even know if I have access to um, like Max anymore. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, that was Kansas's account. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Um, I'll figure out something though. Yeah. Um, I'll ask Ashley. I think she has the. I think she's who has our account. Elaine also. I know she's attempted to watch it, so she has access to account somehow. Yeah, because we talked about it, and she's a fan. So. Um. Yeah. But very very good episode very to start good. off with. Yeah. Hell yeah. We love that. Um, crazy ending, as always. Oh shit! You know, they go. Yeah. They got to make them juicy. Mm. on those With cliffhangers um, yeah because we had just wa- actually I, I didn't watch a few of the episodes but we watched through the first season again ah, so. I want to do that well if you uh, you could probably find a really good recap on like YouTube or some shit honestly yeah. and plus they show a recap before the I heard initial it was a pretty season good but recap. there was a lot of stuff that I'd forgotten about Yeah, and especially like the lineage with all the characters mm-hmm. there's some shit that I was like oh yeah Forgot how crazy that was. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, very good. 
Um, obviously, I'm not going to talk too in depth about it. Don't want to spoil anything. Um, Bran is dead. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, he's not even in the show. Um, what else? Oh, yes. I have been playing uh, a lot more Dead by Daylight recently. Just okay. had a itch for that. Just um, uh, something easy. 20 minutes at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, I got Chucky. Been using Chucky as the killer. Is he a beast? Uh, well, I'd, I'll say this. I've only had one survivor escape in about four games. Okay. So. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's pretty good. That's, you know. 15 out of 16 dead. Yeah. Yeah. You've been Something playing like with that. Ken, any? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, no, when I'm f- since last time you told me about it? Yeah. Uh, I think we played like two other times. Uh, okay. So we played last night for maybe like an hour and a half. Did you actually get to talk to him? Yeah. How is he? Oh, not like that. We were just like talking about the game. Oh, okay. The game chat. Gotcha. Uh, he seems to be doing fine, honestly. Yeah. All right. I uh, know he said, uh, I guess today's his last day in office for like two weeks or so. And I think he's like, I don't know if he's in work or off this week coming up, something like that. But he seems to be doing good. Our friend Ken, buddy of ours, if you don't know. He was actually uh, in our, what Armored was that? Core. Our what? Armored, armored Core, core episode. Huge if you wanna, Armored Core fan. If you want to go back to that, <laughs> um, yeah, he's the biggest Armored Core fan. Loves yeah. it. Loves Max. Uh, in case you were wondering who Ken is, that is the guy. That's him. The other individual. Uh, Aside from that... Oh, I finished Fallout, finally. Oh, okay. Did I mention that last week? I don't know if uh, I did. Well, I remember... Actually, uh, no, because I finished it sunday yeah i was gonna say saturday y'all had talked about having one episode left yeah. and just needing to finish it or you or yeah. y'all wouldn't so so we watched that on sunday um pretty good conclusion um definitely a bit of a plot twist on that final episode mm-hmm. um, stuff that i didn't really expect um i gotta say i'm pretty stoked for the next season yeah yeah curious I'm where the sure. story's gonna go mm-hmm um, yeah, I'd say it's a solid eight out of 10. No, I think that's very fair. I yeah. can't remember what I gave it, but yeah, no, that's somewhere that's close to that. Point. I think, yeah, I think it was like eight, 8.5. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, next week, the new season of the bear comes out. Damn. We got a lot of stuff just kind of coming out all together. I could definitely watch that. Yeah. I definitely pay for Hulu. Yeah. Um, that one definitely snuck up on me. I didn't hear anything about that until y'all had mentioned it. Saturday. The bear, yeah, yeah. But that's I've been very seeing exciting. it on uh, recent like previews of like like Hulu commercials and shit like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, that'll be a good one. So yeah, lots of good shows coming out. Keep me busy for at least a couple months. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You got a lot. I mean, yeah. shoot, Elden, Elden Ring, Ring alone. alone. Yeah. yeah. That's that's many many hours there. You know, um, I wonder on average how many um, like how many hours that is. Um, I was actually just about to say something about that. Damn. Uh, you know, Jack Septicai, the YouTuber. Mm-mm. Top of the born into your lads. Nope. You don't know him. Nope. It's like a huge mine or well, he played Minecraft for a, quite a bit, but he's like a huge gaming YouTuber. Um. Anyway, I think he was posting something about it. And he had said it was like 14 hours or so. 14? Yeah, but he didn't finish it all the way through. Oh, okay. Or he didn't like do everything in it. I was going to say, I was expecting more. Because I think he was just trying to review it or whatever. Oh, uh, mm. okay. But just kind of pumping it out for the yeah. review. Gotcha. So he said 14 hours, which I know me. I'm going to definitely get more than that out of it. Yeah. I mean, I think even he would. You yeah. Know, he's probably going to go back. But you're at least going to get like 15 to 20 hours. Yeah. It sounds. Yeah, so he's probably get, experienced with those kinds of games. He's probably mm-hmm. pretty good. So yeah, I'd say if I get twenty hours out of it, it'll be worth it. Because it's a forty dollar DLC. If I can get two dollars an hour, that's pretty good. Oh, it's forty. 
Yeah, it's 40 bucks. Damn. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't change my mind on anything, but I just wasn't aware that yeah. it was a $40 DLC. I mean, if it's a 10 out of 10. Across the board? Yeah. 10 out of 10. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah I think I've seen That like, doesn't happen a lot. It's the highest rated like DLC of all time. Yeah, right under or right above The Witcher 3s. Oh shit, I yeah. didn't even think about those. Yeah, those were really good. Oh yeah. Yeah, which is pretty fucking crazy considering how much DLC is out there for mm-hmm. other video games. Mhm. Especially um, nowadays. Yeah. Everything fucking gets DLC. But I think that's pretty much all I've been doing this week. Yeah, not really too much. Just watching shows, playing some board games, playing some video games. Simple man. That'll do it. And a good life. Of course, always. And what? Editing. Oh, yeah. This man stays editing. Me too. It's true. I help with that. It's true. (laughs) (laughs) I provide stew. Yeah. (laughs) That's my job. (laughs) Provide that. I show up here. Sometimes I say a thing or two. That's all we need from you. That's my job. <laughs> That's my job. All right. So you want to knock out the rest of these uh, summer games best? Yes. Games. I'm not entirely sure which one you still have, but they're I got I got a few. I have uh, six more. Some of them we did okay. like mention last episode, but we can go more yeah. into depth. I think I got four on here. Yeah, one that I don't even remember: the relic, the first guardian. I don't know. If oh, that was the one that you had told me to watch, and it just seemed very early. It was like PS5. It just seemed very early. There was no HUD on screen. It mm. was nothing. It was solely combat, but it looked pretty clunky. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah With that, just that's the bosses. What that is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it just looked very early. I don't even know why they showed that off. Yeah. But what I have here for it is the first, the Relic, the First Guardian is an action-adventure RPG developed by Project Cloud Games. Players will venture on a journey to save the world shrouded in darkness as the Last Guardian. Mm. Become stronger with various skills and settings to explore the collapsed world while an intriguing story fuels the journey. Solve the riddle of Ars- Arsiltus, gather the pieces of the Great Relic, and lead the world back to prosperity. Honestly, sounds like Chad GPT wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Sounded very, it could be good, but it sounded very cliche. Be- generic. <laughs> Become stronger with various skills and settings to explore the collapsed world. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it doesn't sound too exciting. I feel like we got like 20 games Yeah, that have the same gist. I'm not sure when that comes out, but or case. if it even said, but PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to think of what the actual showcase was called. Maybe it was actually just called, no, because that's a summer games fest is the entire thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't remember what this one was called, but the first game that they had showed off was that new Harry Potter Quidditch game. Oh yeah. Which is called. We briefly talked about that last episode. Harry Potter Quidditch Champions. And. You know, being a big Harry Potter fan, you'd maybe think, um, like, I'm excited for this. I feel like it would have been very different if this was, like, that DLC that we thought we were going to get that we really wanted from mm-hmm. with, like, Hogwarts Legacy. But this looks to be something entirely different. Um, not even looks to be. It's definitely something entirely different. Yeah. And it's, like, a completely different kind of minimal graphic style. Um, I don't even know if we if they really showed off, like, gameplay. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if they did or not. Um, All yeah, no, I I just put that I'm not sure how I feel about this. I just w- after I watched it, uh, I wasn't like left excited no. or looking forward to it. The art direction just very fucking mid. Yeah, I was not a fan of it. It looked like one of those games that would have been like coming out on mobile and Switch. Honestly, yeah, yeah. Or maybe that's their intention. Maybe. <laughs> maybe um, it'll come to those. I don't know if this was in the show, but this was the place that I had uh, wrote something about it. But um, Dragon Ball, Sparking Zero. What's we up? got some new trailers. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> um, we got, at this point, I think we've got like, there's a decent amount of just new stuff that's out there covering this game. From yeah. Trailers, 
Um, I think a lot of people have different like demo videos out. But um, I had put new trailer looks sick. Looks like we'll be able to go through Z and Super because I know we had kind of questioned that in previous episodes. Um, I didn't see anything about like Dragon Ball. Maybe some of those characters will be in the roster, but it looks like story-wise, or at least in the story mode, you'll be able to go through Z and Super. Maybe up to the uh, Broly movie, because that was the yeah. latest thing that I had seen. Um, but yeah, just based off what I was seeing. I didn't... Okay, I just said that. Um, also looks like you'll be able to make... This looked interesting. Um, in the game, based off what I've seen, if I like kind of deciphered what was going on correctly... It looked like you'll be able to make different choices in the story, like mm. almost like what if scenarios. Yeah. Um, so, for example, with fighting Raditz, it gave two options to work with Piccolo as, you know, that's like the canonically correct way is, um, you know, working with Piccolo, Special Beam Cannon, um, or go through it alone. Like those were the options given. So I don't know if like, if you work with Piccolo, you just go straight there with Piccolo. Or if you work alone, if you like somehow finish that alone, or if Piccolo ends up joining you later on, I'm not too sure. But yeah. it would be kind of cool to see like a what if moment. Like, how would Goku beat Raditz by himself? I think the cool thing about that is like us going through it, we obviously know the canon yeah. uh, option. Mm -hmm. so just to pick the different one every time just to see oh yeah what happens or even just picking that one i wonder if, if it would uh affect every other outcome in the game to be different oh yeah i really don't know i don't know how in depth yeah they would go with or it, if it just is kind of like a scenario by scenario type ordeal right um so yeah no i mentioned that would be a pretty cool element added for replayability um, I just wonder how many opportunities you'll, you know, you'll have to do this. Yeah. And then I'd put that in case you forgot, the game is set to release October eleventh, twenty twenty four of this year. Um, I did watch. Uh, I didn't finish it, but it was like twenty minutes total of just like some of like the demo that I guess was shown off at the or it was playable at the Summer Games Fest. And, like, the fighting looks really good, but one thing that I made note of that I wasn't too excited about was it, it, it looks like it cuts a lot of the corners with just, like, the transition scenes to, I guess, just kind of get you through the game. Oh, really? Yeah, just, like, to, you know, just to, like, show off the story. Hmm. Um, and at least in this scene, going back to Raditz, when, like, Gohan breaks free and gets really angry, you know? Um, the delivery of that vocal performance just seemed pretty weak. Oh, uh, yeah. You know? But, like, that's part of what I at least love about Z and just Dragon Ball in general. Yeah. Was, Actually... Um, like, those moments, those rage moments. Like, you can't screw up the first mm -hmm. Super Saiyan. You can't screw up the Cell games. Yeah. But just hearing, like, you know, Kid Gohan, like, Nah! Let go of my daddy. <laughs> yeah. ah. I actually like, seen. No. I guess Sean Schummel was at like a Comic Con or some kind of panel recently. Mm -hmm. And he was asked if he was voicing Super Saiyan 4 Goku for some reason in this game. Um, and he said yes. And apparently he worked on this game for about six or, yeah, like 60 to 80 hours. Which, I mean. I don't know if that's a lot. It doesn't really seem like a lot, but just voicing. That is a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're I, just in there just talking that entire time. Especially, um, you know, coming from like a veteran. Yeah. Who's been doing this for years and yeah, years. So, I, mean, I imagine there's a lot of one takes. Exactly. Yeah. So that is, I feel like a lot. And did we know previous to that, that we were getting GT? Because that definitely confirms that we're getting GT. Yeah. That can, well, I, I don't know if it confirms like the storylines, but at least the um, character. characters, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, which I mean, you can't have a game like this without fucking Super Saiyan Four Goku. Um, maybe I'm ignorant. Does someone else originally voice Super Saiyan Four? No, Goku? I think that was just asking the question if Super Saiyan Four Goku would be in the game. Oh, oh, so that person was maybe being sly. Exactly. Like, yeah. hey, oh, we're getting GT. Yeah. <laughs> 
Because well, well, I we remember got it. when we when the game was first announced, um, we were wondering what story modes they would be going through, like Dragon Ball all the way to Super, or you know what they would hit on, or if they would just do some different things, right? Some like what if scenarios, yeah. So, yeah, because I mean that's a lot of what Z Universe was is just like major plot points and then like what if shit. Yeah, I was so. about to say that wasn't Z Universe, um, like pretty much what if, yeah. Because it's like something in the timeline is different, and you mm-hmm. kind of go correct it. I don't even rem- uh, <laughs> I can't remember yeah. the exact whatever it scenario. was. It just was not for me. Um, so maybe this will this will be a little different. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it was cool being able to create your own character. But That's I think neat. I could be remembering wrong, but I believe I've seen something to where you could do um, uh, like split screen. Like same system, like split screen, local play, with mm-hmm. this game. I um, mean, just like fighting each other, or what do you mean? I I think it's fighting each other, but I want to say there was like some multiplayer aspect to it also, and in, mm-hmm. in the sense of like maybe like two v twos, or something like that. Oh shit! But it was very limited because of like the. It was hard with all the things that they had in place, and it was kind of a late addition or something like that. But they're still adding it. It's just very limited. Yeah, I, I, I would have to go back and check that because yeah. that's just popped into my head. Right. But uh, yeah, it's something, something like that. Maybe with updates, they'll like add to it. Yeah, that something sounds, like that. I could potentially be cool. Yeah. Just it kind of scares me a little bit when it's like a a late edition. I'm thinking like, oh, this probably isn't going to deliver. If this was like something y'all thought about adding late, yeah, I'm not entirely sure on that. Um, but yeah, no, I guess we'll see. Well, sure. I, I think m- what I'm talking about is like the uh, like local aspect, because like the games now, you know, you need your whole screen on this one character because there's so many visual effects. Mm-hmm. Like back then, it was just you know punches and a beam and shit like that. So I think with it being on one screen. And you have to control two people. It's kind of limiting to what you can fit in that area. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, I don't. That that is weird with like a kind of three D environment. Yeah, because it's not a fighter. It's you know a typical Dragon Ball Z game. Mm-hmm. But with the way the three D renderings are, yeah, I feel like it'd be hard to kind of fit that in one screen. So yeah. that's how it's limiting. I, I don't think quite know how you would do that locally. Yeah. Hmm. So it definitely interesting and in how it is limited though. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll see again. Um, we only got to wait till October 11th. Yeah. It'll how be long? Here. Um, very shortly, four yeah. months. I mean, it it looks it does look pretty sweet though. It was just I wanted to make note of those like kind of transition scenes. I can't wait to use Beast Gohan. <laughs> I really like Beast Gohan. I can't wait either. Yeah. Uh. Well. Shit. Oh. Well. Maybe maybe um, that's the furthest it's going because Beast Gohan is after the Broly movie. Yeah, I don't think it's so been a superhero movie. I don't I don't think it's been advertised, but it, it would it's definitely gonna happen. It's got to be at least a character. You know, you may not have to hit on its story or I guarantee DLC. This is going to be a game. Yeah, they they fucking we've seen what they've done with yeah. uh, Kakarot, Xenoverse, and Xenoverse. Two. Dude, it's what they're doing with Xenoverse DLC. Two is nut nutty. Yeah. Um, still getting shit nutty, but in in a good way. Like it's cool when they, yeah. um, you know, they they update games for years to come. Yeah, I literally haven't played that game in years, and it's gotten update after update. Yeah, so, yeah, it's definitely cool. <laughs> I love that. And Tony was just like, "Yes, more, <laughs> more, another three hundred hours worth." Yeah. You know, Antonio's got this thing pre-ordered. Mm-hmm. Collector's edition with the statue. Can't wait to get that. 20 FPS on the Switch. Can't wait to get that 19 inches of Mesmer. <laughs> or whatever his name was. <laughs> Isn't Mesmer the one, the dude from Elden Ring? Yeah, I was referencing. Remember how they like worded it with like the different editions? It was like, oh, it comes yeah. With a, uh, <laughs> it comes with the statue. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah, yeah. on the page it was like worded like, yeah. you know, get 19 inches of this Mesmer <laughs> or something like that. If that's his name. It was it was something uh, along those lines. Not verbatim. Um, anything else you want to say on Dragon Ball? Nah. What did you have next? 
Um, like I did. <laughs> okay, so Hunter Hunter, they showed off a Hunter Hunter game. See, I had seen the trailer, but that's when we were watching together and you told me it looked like shit, so I didn't even watch it. Yes, it uh, <laughs> absolutely looked like Damn, shit. Man, why do I got to do my boy like that? I know. Hunter why Hunter. Why even make it? Nen Impact is what it's called. I don't know. They just don't have a budget for that. I just wonder so who's in charge. I guess I don't even know if this is like the publisher who does it, but like maybe someone at Bandai Namco. It's like, hey, we need we haven't got a Hunter Hunter game in a long time. We haven't had a fairy tale game in a long time. It's like mm-hmm. who's asking for these like niche low ass. budget niche like anime games? I don't know. I that mean, never really deliver. Like the Seven Deadly Sins ones, the um Demon Slayer. Mm-hmm. My Hero Academia, which I mean, surprisingly, even, like those games don't have like bigger budget games. Yeah, even the One Piece titles. games, like especially One Piece. One Piece is a, it's I mean it's pretty much the number one anime aside from Dragon Ball, and I don't know the games just fucking suck. They, I didn't play World Seeker, but I think that was like a somewhat of a bigger budget One Piece yeah, game. Yeah, but the reviews suck on them. Oh, did, do they? Yeah, pretty much like anything aside from like Dragon Ball Z games, just people hate. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. But like, yeah, I don't I don't know why they keep doing it. Unless it's just so cheap for them to make and they make these games so cheaply that they will, it's pretty much kind of guaranteed profit just from the name alone. Mm-hmm. So I it's think like, they, hey, let's keep doing it. We're making money. They should honestly do it the way that... Um, Dragon Ball Z did Kakarot because I, I think that would be awesome. Give us yes, like go through Hunter Hunter like that. Like I want, well, that would be amazing. But I would love that and like the Naruto yeah, style. Even like that. that would be, I would pay some fucking money. Yeah, that'd but, be hard to do. That'd have to <clears throat> definitely be multiple games. Oh yeah, especially yeah. if One Piece did that, mm-hmm. dude. That's at least ten games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I have like it's got to be like sixty or seventy hours in Kakarot. And I, I think I just maybe just beat Cell. Holy fuck! Yeah, <laughs> I was not expecting to hear that. Something like that, yeah. Damn. And then within the time that you've played, they've added another like thirty to fifty hours worth Probably, of content. Probably, yeah. But a game, the game is fucking awesome. It was yeah. just, I don't know. I just probably dropped it for something else. Yeah. And I guess maybe um, that's a good segue. That's why I wanted to make a note of the transitions in story with Spark and Zero that I at least seen in that one example. Because I'm, you know, I'm kind of used to Kakarot now. It's like, hey, you're giving me the entire story. Yeah. And in here, we have a lot of story to go over, so I guess they can't make it a Kakarot-sized game when there's other shit going on, so they have to have those kind of quicker transitions. Yeah, and also, I'm not very familiar with the uh, Budokai Tenkaichi games. I'm more familiar with the Budokai games. Right. So I can't remember how they did that in the original Tenkaichis. But I would imagine it's pretty similar. It's probably, and honestly, it's probably much better done, you know, yeah. here. But I don't know. I guess it was easier to look past or just not think of when you're a kid. Mm-hmm. Just fucking hopping around a fucking. I know. I mean, I yeah, I guess someone though. could say, like, dude, you fucking love Budokai 2. It was a fucking game board. Yeah, you know, but it was awesome. <laughs> you just got, like, you didn't even really get cutscenes. You just got fucking dialogue, and that was the story. But, yes, it was awesome. That is true. That is true. Yeah. But, you know what? We evolve, and our tastes might get shittier, and it might get better. You yeah. know, you never know. It is true. Opinions. But Opinions. Everybody has one. Yep. Uh, Hunter Hunter. Nen Impact, what I put for this was game looks like shit. <laughs> Lips don't even move when they're talking. It's not translated not to English. Uh, it's it's very, very minimal. And then Or is it just like a but like just consistency? Even then, like it's oh it's like not even like that. It's like sometimes you'll see the movement and then sometimes there's just no movement. Well, like now- it's not even consistent. Now I have to watch it. Yeah, trailer. you should you should watch it just to see what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, that sucks. But uh, I put lips don't move when they're talking. It's not even translated to English and looks like a typical 2D fighter and that's the least of the worries. <laughs> Switch, PlayStation, and PC. 
No Xbox. I guess so. <laughs> Xbox is like, hey, we ain't mad. We don't need that one. Uh, another one I have here is called Broken Lore Unfollow. You remember this one? The horror mm-hmm. game? Um, it was did we the watch war- this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We watched it towards the end of the showcase. Or actually, it was like in... It wasn't even in the showcase when we watched it. And it was called Broken Lore? Yeah. I'll uh, I'll put uh, explain what I put here and see if you can remember. Okay. Um, a surreal horror game where you play as a victim of bullying, fighting, terrifying monsters as you uncover a dark mystery and a thrilling journey of terror. It pushes you to the edge of your seat as you explore the dark impact of social media on mental health. No date as of yet. But it was that really weird one. I was just shown like a bunch of fucking like weird creatures. Nothing you comes to mind. No, no. Damn. Okay. Well, it looked really good. Okay, so this is one that's like somewhat on your radar at least. I think so. It looked pretty cool. But it it looked uh like you didn't know what the fuck was going on. Did it look like a, a anything lot of that we've seen before? Like to compare it to? Uh I'd say if you made like a a hype a hypercut of like Silent Hill or Resident Evil. It could look like this, but it's just like a bunch of just weird scenarios. Okay. Okay. With weird monsters. Hard to explain. Hmm. And but again, yeah. that one's called Um Broken Lore Unfollow. So Broken yeah, it's something lore. has to do with so social media, which I don't entirely understand from that trailer because it doesn't give anything like that away until the very end when it has like a bunch of like unfollows pop up on the screen. Okay. So yeah, very strange. So going to be on the lookout for that to see how that evolves. Mm-hmm. Um, you got one? Um, all right. So this one, I don't know if you've seen this one, but this one actually looked pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie. And I remember one of the latest uh, Remember the Game episodes I was uh, listening to. Adam Blank had mentioned this one. Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Rita's Rewind. I don't think I watched that. So this was kind of, it just, it's made to look like one of those older kind of 2D beat-em-up games okay. that you would see on like the SNES or like in the arcade, kind of like the later um, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games, yeah. especially like the latest one, Shredder's Revenge. Right, right. Um, so I put new beat-em-up game that looks like a lot of fun with up to four friends. Uh, looked like it also had some rail gunning segments as well. Mm. It, it was kind of like mashing some different genres there, not just beat them up, just to keep it fresh. Um, yeah, just looked to have a lot of charm and a lot of just like '90s nostalgia love thrown in. It just That's looked cool. like a genuinely fun game to play. It probably, if it's anything like Shredder's Revenge, because my dad and I went through that. Yeah. And there's a little bit of replayability there with unlocking some characters and things to collect, but it's kind of like those games that they can be a little bit difficult, but once you go through them, it's like five to ten hours. They're pretty short games. Fair. But it would be sick to have like a beat em up and then those like Megazord segments. Oh, dude, that would be you know, sick. To see how they do that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, it just looked just looked really cool. It just switches to Unreal Engine Five. <laughs> <laughs> like that would be cool. It would be. I would not be mad at that. And it's just fucking. It's a Gundam game from that point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, honestly, that sounds sick. Um, I, I'm trying to remember this trailer. Which um, one? For Deer and Boy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Like, um, I, like, I can kind of remember he, it. Like he like finds the deer in the woods. Yeah. Um, I guess the mother died um, or something like that. And then he yeah. like grows up with the deer and the mm-hmm. deer looks like fucking um, Xerneas. Yeah, like a like a spirit of the forest or exactly. something. Like, um, but it gave me... It, I didn't play these games much, but like they were very popular. But have you heard of, played, or seen um, Limbo? Yep, that's exactly Inside. what it reminded me of, yeah. Yeah, it made me think of like a game like that that's very kind of story narrative driven. Kind of eerie, kind of cutesy. Eerie, like puzzle solving. Yeah. So I just put, not exactly sure what kind of game this is. Kind of is. The Last Guardian. Yeah, a little bit of that too. Look to be a narrative driven, slow paced puzzle platformer. Looks cute as hell, sad as hell. Yes. But really neat. Yeah. Um, it looked good enough to where I was like, hmm. I keep an know. eye on that. 
I like happened to see that on sale for like ten bucks one day, I may try it out. Mm-hmm. Why refund it? <laughs> Why refund it? Yeah, <laughs> make sure I don't play two hours of it. Yeah. Uh, here's one. Uh, Among the Wild. Now I told you to watch this one. Do you remember this? Do you remember wow. the little cute Karibo looking motherfuckers? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is it was kind of like a cozy game, right? Yeah, it's like a cozy game, like creature collecting, mm-hmm. um, like farming sim type. Right. Yeah. Um, not entirely sure what you do in that game. It was a very tiny uh trailer, mm-hmm. very short. Um, but apparently you can um sign up now for like the beta testing or the I don't know, test server testing. I'm not entirely sure what it is. It made me think of Pow World in the way that it seemed like there was a focus yes. on capturing these creatures, but you utilize them to exactly. do things. Exactly, yeah. Kind of like within Pow World. And there's a bunch of creatures. Yeah. Which, that's a game we will be returning to very, soon. very shortly. Yeah. Um, Getting some content, so we'll have some hours to pump. Yeah, that, that's got a lot of like really cool looking uh, new content. Yeah. Uh, did we talk about that? The new trailer that dropped for that? Ah, shit, I don't even. I th- I think it. We may not have talked about it last week because I don't have it in my notes. But maybe the week before then, yeah. I feel like we I had say to we, mentioned it. Uh, yeah, I want to say we at least mentioned it. But yeah, that's getting some to it. new. Uh, not really DLC, but a new new update. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty big update some too. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, new pals, like a new kind of area. New, new raid. New raid. New um, just like building materials. Yeah. Um. A, a very good reason to return to the mm-hmm. game. Yeah, so yeah, glad they're uh, keeping their word, pumping out some content on that. I'm sure they're working on some crazy shit for that game. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <coughs> um, Sorry, was there anything else you want to say about that game? I thought more was coming. No, uh, I think it's PC only. Okay. I can add that, okay. but yeah, there wasn't really much. Um. Among the Wild, if you're into like creature collecting or even that Pow World feel, this mm-hmm. is probably another game that kind of resembles that um, without guns, unfortunately, I believe. <laughs> but that is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but if you're into like more farming and the cozy shit like side. that, yeah, the cozy yeah. side, then I would definitely check that out. Among the Wild. Oh, yeah. Um. All right. So this one, I remember I played for you. This one like surprised us. Like in a oh good yeah, way. I know exactly. What you're no, talking no, no, about. no, not that one yet. Not that oh. one yet. That one's next. Oh. But Kingdom Come. Oh yes. Deliverance Dude, too. Yeah. Actually, uh, I pulled up YouTube earlier, and that was the first thing that popped up. Did you rewatch it? No, no. It was like a sponsored ad, but oh, it was just okay. cool. Yeah. Something about that. Like I don't know why the first one. I don't know anything about the first one. Like, I remember it was very big, them introducing the combat. Like, that was a big thing. Like, it was very strategic. But something about it just wasn't on my radar. Yeah. I didn't... Yeah, I never played it. But after watching the second trailer, or the trailer for the second game, I was fucking blown away. It just seems very immersive and just story-heavy. Like, very story-driven. It's got a dating sim. It just seemed like you were playing <laughs> like a um like a Game of Thrones like RPG yeah, literally. or something. Yeah. Um I wish it was a little more dark fantasy, but I'm not mad at it. Yeah. It's a very what um, what would the term be? I would say it it look I I'm sure cuz the the trailer makes it seem very light at times, but there's probably going to be some really dark moments. Oh yeah. But I don't think we get any fantasy. I think this yeah. is more realistic medieval. Exactly. Um, but what Definitely I put sick. was uh, never played the first, but the trailer showed off a ton of personality in the second installment. Looked to be an engrossingly immersive RPG experience. Wouldn't have expected this to be on my radar, but I'm thoroughly impressed. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> you were telling me about this trailer and I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> but yeah, the trailer Dude. fucking blew me away. Yeah, check that fucking trailer out. And yeah. if, if I, like, see anywhere where people are like, dude, play the first one, like, the story's so fucking good, I may have to wait for that game to, to go, you know, to get on sale or something. And listen, guys, there's even sex in the trailer. How crazy is that? Dude, here for that. It's crazy. I dude. mean, I'm sure there's going to be some bush. You know, these are medieval times. 
Yeah, unless you're taking a damn dagger to it, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hope you got your tetanus shot. Oh, God. <laughs> um, <laughs> ooh, this is a good one. Empire of the Ants. You remember that? Oh, I do remember this. That yes. one was pretty sick. Um, not entirely sure how the gameplay is going to look. Um, because obviously, uh, it may have been gameplay in the trailer. It but looked like it. There I was like no like UI shown really, so it's hard to tell what things, yeah, are going to look like. I think in the final, yeah. Um, the good news is we'll find out soon because November seventh is when it comes out. Um, uh, but Empire of the Ants is a photorealistic strategy game where you control a colony of ants and protect them against other insects and possibly animals. Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, November 7th. Um, but yeah, it, it looks fucking crazy good. Fucking Bugs Life IRL. Yeah. So if you're into strategy, this game looks pretty dope. Hmm. I wonder if it's like... Like if they really um, like did a lot of ant research. They had so. So it's like, hey, this is actually, you know, this is what they do. These These are their movements. This is like... I don't know if this is the right thing to say or right term to use, but like this is strategically what they would do and how they would gather this or mm-hmm. how they would protect their queen. You yeah. know, like that'd be kind of cool if there's a lot of research done for this game. And it not like that that like information's not already out there, but, right? You know, but it looked like there was like some uh, very niche bugs in there that they were kind of battling against, mm-hmm. like some weird ass beetles that I've never really seen before with like black and red st- patterns. So, I feel like there's going to be some good stuff in here. So, yeah, I'll it, keep an eye on that. Not, yeah. I'm not a big strategy guy by any means, but, like, I can get behind a, uh, like, an Age of Empires-esque strategy game. Maybe mm-hmm. this, depending on, you know, how it plays. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, definitely, when you had first told me to, like, check it out and were telling me about it, it didn't really seem like on my radar at all. Yeah. But I will say it was a good trailer. It actually surprised me a little bit. Yeah. But it's definitely a very beautiful game. So check yeah. it out if even if you don't aren't into strategy games. Yeah. Worth no, a watch. Definitely looks good. Um, and then lastly for Summer Games Fest that I have is that one that really surprised us. The one that you thought I was referencing. Okay. Um, and I think I feel like we did mention it last week, but Killer Bean. You you mentioned it, but we didn't go over it. Uh, that yeah. was probably when you stopped me. Yeah, um, this game, dude. <laughs> probably the best trailer in the entire fucking, even better than uh, Gears of War. Honestly, this is an epic yeah, trailer. for me, yeah, this is an <laughs> epic trailer. And apparently, like, there's lore here. There's yeah. like years worth of stuff already established on YouTube yeah. with Killer Bean. I thought this was original when I'd seen Well, it's a very original idea for a game, but I thought this was like a, a brand new kind of IP. Yeah. Um, but what I put was, and it's funny after you see the trailer, it may not like match up with what I'm saying here, but uh, this game looks incredible. Um, it hits on all the cheesy action movie tropes in the best way possible. Third person roguelike shooter or roguelite shooter this game looks genuinely fun early access summer of this year 2024 um i'm very curious how like that roguelite element will like play into it yeah me too um just by the trailer looks very fun almost kind of gta style so i'm definitely curious what that means in terms of this game yeah, because, um, again, like, third-person roguelite, I would even throw in, like, sandbox. It seemed very sandboxy. Yeah. Like, there's so many crazy ways that you can, like, get through this level just with, like, killing people in the most cheesy, insane, you know, ways, <laughs> different scenarios. You think but he's going to be able to curve the bullet? Um, He's got to be able to. <laughs> because he shot a bullet, it hit something, and then it like ricocheted and then yeah. killed somebody. So I imagine they will hit on that whole curve in the bullet thing. Because yeah. again, it was very kind of like action movie tropey. You're gonna stab somebody with a pencil. Yeah, like I forgot with the um, 
the like the bad guys are called, but I remember the one scene he's like, I used to work for the shadow agency. <laughs> and then they lied to me yeah. and tried to kill me. So I'm going to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, I have man. a particular set of skills. Pretty much. I will find you. That would be awesome if it hits on like the classic like action movie yeah. like tropes. And just like references them in some way. Like he has like the John Wick suit. Mm-hmm. Like the kind of like medium to long hair like wig. He pulls and he's, up he a goes to the uh, the fucking like hotel with all the assassins. <laughs> yeah, like, that would be fucking awesome. Um, but yeah, no, like I'm I'm very curious as to how this is going to play, like what this game will play like. Uh, I but guess we'll, find, we'll out find out very soon. soon. Um, no, summer. like exact date, but it says early access summer of this year or so. At least within the le- next few months. Yeah, I'd at least um follow it on Steam for sure. Yeah. Killer Bean, Killer Bean. May have to check out those YouTube videos, see what this is about. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> but I used to work for the Shadow Agency. <laughs> I used to work for the Shadow Agency. I think that's what it's called, the Shadow Agency. All right, so let's go over some Nintendo Direct. Um, Real quick, real quick, real quick. Oh. I did, because um, before we had filmed last week's episode, we had started the Ubisoft Showcase. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Because we had watched what they showed, or what they had of uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Um, But I was just kind of, like, skipping through to see if there was, like, anything new. Um, And there wasn't too much, just, like, updates for games you already have that are already out. Um, You you get to see some pretty good, uh, like, Assassin's Creed Shadows gameplay. Mm. Look pretty sweet. But one thing I wanted to make note of, I don't remember us saying last time, and I barely caught it uh, this time watching through. But Star Wars Outlaws, which comes out August 30th of this year, 2024, um, that's coming day one to Ubisoft Plus. I just thought that was interesting. Ubisoft Plus. I don't even yeah. know what that is. Um, I think that's what it was called. It was like Ubisoft Plus or, or Uplay Plus. Oh, it's the like Uplay they, thing. They have yeah, their, that's right. Yeah. Their own thing. I forgot about that. That's cool. That's but really cool, yeah, actually. Day one. Um, uh, yeah. Very cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Probably um, won't get but it. But yes. I'll probably just buy it. But yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> um, that would definitely be one that's worth buying. So Yeah. For sure. I'm saying that right now, dude. What? Outlaws? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Not a refund. No. Not a refund game. No, 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 no. That's a, that's a day one. It's Easy. a refund game, but Where not, you not a refund it, game. Exactly. It's fun each time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Nintendo Direct. Uh, Robert, you have a lot of games to go over for this Direct. You took right. a ton of notes. You covered I, every game, right? No. There was, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, a lot of... I, w- I can't really say a shit game because they kind of just... Uh, they're doing a lot of remakes. They're doing a lot of OG shit um, for their like expansion pass for the Nintendo Online, uh, which is cool. Like Donkey Kong is coming. Um, or some other ones. Uh, Donkey Kong... I can't remember which one. Donkey Kong. Hold on to the like sixty four. Yeah, the the sixty four like Nintendo Online thing. Oh, is it? I yeah. missed that. Um, because the only thing that I seen on Donkey Kong, which I thought was kind of dumb, was they're bringing um, Donkey Kong Country Returns, which came out on the Wii. Oh, maybe that's what it was. Bringing that over to uh, the Switch. Okay, that's what it was then. Which. I mean, like, if you want more Donkey Kong Country, cool, and you want to play it the best way possible, cool, but on the Wii U, we got Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, which was Uh, ported over to the Switch a while back. Oh, was it? A while back. Oh, interesting. And then you're giving us a Wii game now? Yeah, they're picking some Like the one before? Like, this is pretty much a sequel to it. They're picking some dumbass games. Yeah, I'm just like... on here. Like, we still haven't got all the OG Pokemon games? That's what the people want. Give the people what they want. Yeah. yeah. But they're honestly probably waiting for the next system. And then they'll wait till the end of the lifespan when it's dying off. So yeah, we'll get it in about 15 years. <laughs> the OG ones? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Hmm. Um, but we got some Perfect Dark is coming to the... Uh, 
yes. online, uh, I believe. I'm sure a lot of people are excited for that. Yeah, yeah that was cool. Dark is coming. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what the Dragon Age one, two, and three remakes. Yeah, and they're like, like two point five remakes. HD remakes. Yeah, um, um, they've yeah, that seems pretty cool. Made in the style of like kind of like Octopath Traveler, yeah, triangle strategy, that kind of two point five D pixel graphics. Yeah, which is pretty cool, but I don't see myself playing them. But I'm pretty sure there's a lot of like hardcore fans out there. Just for like Dragon with or Dragon um, Quest. Monster Hunter, I've tried just several times to to get into Dragon Quest. Really. Just something about it. Like, obviously, I love, like, the Toriyama style mm-hmm. it has, the charm it has, but I don't know. I feel like it's, like, almost a little too silly for me. That's fair. Yeah, and yeah. just, and I haven't played, you know, there's a lot of them I haven't played, but, like, I may, if anything, because I think I have it for one of the consoles, but the, um, which one was it, 12? Like, mm-hmm. the latest, like, actual installment. Um, like me, I, I hear really good things about that, but yeah, the games just don't really seem to have like that seriousness that I'm looking for yeah. in a story or at least a little bit of it. It just seems very lighthearted, but yeah, again, I, think I haven't fully played it. A dragon quest in like the style of like final fantasy, I think would be, that would be sick. Cool. You know what? Like Spe- the, uh, the, uh, the Toriyama style, but like a more final fantasy attitude, I think. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Or even like a Dragon Ball Z attitude. Just give us some more angst. Yeah, I mean seriously. Yeah, yeah. give us some angst because Z has some angst. Z has like the perfect balance of like lightheartedness. Yeah, that, but seriousness and angst. That's what made me fall in love with it. Yeah, I was like, I yo, this is it. badass. Ha ha ha. And then, <laughs> whereas Dragon Quest now has the seriousness of Super. Yeah, and it's just fucking silly. The whole yeah, fucking I know. time. Unfortunately, there is a lot of silliness. Yeah. Up until the end, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it definitely has its moments. Um, mm-hmm. But gosh, what do they do to our boy Vegeta? He's a family man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> pussy whip. The hairline's <laughs> pushed all the way back. Skirt. <laughs> Give me that uh, Prince of All Saiyan. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'm working on that. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, me too. Um, Trying to reverse that shit. But yeah, I'll name off a few. You tell me if you want to go over any of them. Okay. All right, we got Mario Party Jamboree. Um, you know, nothing really to say here. It's a Mario Party. They're a newer Mario Party. Uh, they, they're they giving or bringing back mini games from like previous games. It You know, it's yeah. the fucking Mario Party. I know game. they're also bringing back like stages yeah. from previous games. Which but. is cool. Um, it's going to be a Mario Party game. Nothing really to say here. Yeah, I think. again, I just feel like, I said it earlier, there's just so many. Like, just go back to any of them. Any of them, somehow. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have a GameCube, go back to four, five, six, seven. It's going to be fresh. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be like, dude, I played these games already. No, you're not going to fucking remember those games. Mm-hmm. That was 15 years ago, bud. Okay, bud. <laughs> okay, bud. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, but I mean, it it makes sense. Like, of course, they're gonna come out with a another one and milk it out. Like, it makes sense, but it's like mm-hmm. we don't really need it. Yeah, dude, they showed um, Funko Fusion, the Funko Pop game for the uh, other systems. Yeah, apparently the Switch is getting this, dude. It looked like complete shit on the Switch. It did. It, it did. Did. was even so the video bad. I was watching, like in the game, the gameplay it showed off. It just looked very laggy, dude. It was ass. But like. I think this game is going, and hopefully I'm wrong. I always, you know, hope the well, wish the best. But who is this game fucking for? I don't know. I think it looks fun, but I mean, it's obviously for the like Lego fans, like the fans that are diehard like Lego game fans. It's just like, hey, I mean, like I have Funkos. I, I don't think they're in uh, in the shot, but like I like Funkos. But it's like, hey, here's a Funko game. You know how there's like hundreds of thousands of different series and franchises that we have Funkos for? Here's 30 of them yeah. that are so fucking random. Yeah, it's like Chucky. It's like here's Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park, Chucky, He-Man. I know, yeah. Very Maybe random. Ghostbusters, but I'm like... You know there aren't going to be any Pokemon Funko Pops. Hell no. <laughs> Weirdly, because it's coming out on the Switch. I know. Like Switch exclusive or something. But I'm just no, like... No, it's not an exclusive. 
Well, I just meant oh, like you're saying a, like if they added Pokemon once. Yeah, yeah, just kind of like how on the uh, Switch version of Skyrim, yeah, they had cool. like the Legend of Zelda attire and stuff mm-hmm. you could get. Like have like exclusive Switch, you know, Pokemon Funkos or something. Yeah. But I just do not see who this game is for. Like you said, for like people that like Minecraft and Legos, but like what made you want to be like, let's make that, but Funkos? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. But Hopefully I'm wrong, but it just looks odd. All that to say, don't get it for the Switch, bro. Yeah. If you have another system, play it on that. Again, just, we, uh, we can't forget that um, like most people watching this are probably people around our age, but like, you know, they have to show some games that are for the kids too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, that's probably who it's for. Like, hey, my kid wants this. We only have a Switch. Let me get it. Yeah. You know. Um, we are getting a new Lord of the Rings game. Uh yeah, let's talk about kind it. Kind of. Let's talk about it. Um, for the Switch. Uh I, was this a Switch exclusive? I know it was on the Nintendo Direct, but I don't um, remember seeing it for the I other don't consoles. remember seeing it for any other consoles, but I, I highly doubt it. Um uh if you don't know about this game, I kinda lied. It's more of a Hobbit game. Uh Tales of the Shire, it's more of a like cozy uh game. Not entirely sure what it is. In the in the trailer, all it showed really was them cooking and kind of only in the Shire. And the art direction Chris and I talked about it before the show. The art direction did look pretty ass. I think so. Yeah. Um, it's got to be coming out on something else because it did not look good in this trailer. Yeah. Um, this is coming out holiday 2024, so sometime at the end of the year. Um, it does look like it would probably be fun for a few hours. I just have to see more. Yeah. I see think what is what all you can do. Um, I think it's a game that's going to do well and sell well. Mm-hmm. It, this the problem here is it was just not a good trailer. Yeah, like, the trailer I did didn't not show you shit. This was a good trailer at all. Like yeah. it didn't get like you should if someone's like, dude, Lord of the Rings, The Shire, cozy sim game. Yeah, you should be hype as fuck. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, but like but the this last was a terrible trailer. You know what? There's only been like all right. So there was the the PS2 Lord of the Rings games. Great, right? Oh yeah, Insanely iconic, good. iconic with a friend. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And then you got, um, what the fuck was it called? The one in uh, are we going to like the 360 or yeah. are we still on the PS2? Oh, Shadow of Mordor. Shadow of Mordor, um, yeah, those two games, War of Shadow of War. What the fuck was it called? Shadows of War. I don't know. It was something Th- there's like two of them. I know yeah, there's two of them. About. So yeah, they had yeah, a sequel. Yeah. Those were great games too. Didn't play the sequel, but I did play the first one. Um, and then you get... I love the first one, by the way. Yeah, it's a great game. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then you get... Like this past year, you got um, that Gollum game. Oh. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking with that. Dude, dude, seriously. Honestly, probably the worst game that came out like this past year. Um, and then you got, uh, what is it, Lands of Moria or something oh, like yeah, that? Oh, yeah, the that one where you play like the dwarves in the mines. Dwarves of Moria. It's kind of like a survival game. Mines of Moria? Something like that. Mines of Moria. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, yeah. Which didn't do too right. well, but it seems like it could be fun. I'd play that if you're like, hey, yeah. looking for a game to play. You want to try this? I would. But unfortunately, it didn't do well. And then you have this. So I don't know who they're... Although people are buying rights to the Lord of the Rings... Um, other studios got to pick this shit up, man. There could be <laughs> so many cool Lord of the Rings games. Well, what they did with like the Shadow of Mordor is what you need to do every single time with yeah. a Lord of the Rings game. Yeah, but I mean, like that's one particular genre. Like you could do so many fucking cool genres with the Lord of the Rings, like yeah. a cozy. Yeah, you could perfectly do that with, like, say this game. Um, I'd take an up a notch, honestly, but. You could go the route of fucking an open world RPG, which would be phenomenal. Like, yeah. that would be honestly probably a perfect fucking game. Give it, give us The Witcher in Lord of the Rings. You know, give us Skyrim, Lord of the Rings. Give, give us, us Dark Souls, Lord of the Rings. That would be sweet. Um, what we really need 
is Larian Studios. Dude, Lord honestly, of the Rings game. fucking Give honestly. Give us Baldur's Gate, but Lord of the Rings. Yeah, but they're taking their money and they're running. They're like, Wizards of the Coast fucked us. They took half of our money. <laughs> We're going to go develop fucking um, Divinity, which I think that's what they're they're going to do three next, I think. Yeah, there's yeah. two out. Hold on. Did they get screwed on Boulder Skate? No, but I mean, Wizards of the Coast is just famously like asshole. Do they greedy. like own D and D? Oh yeah, the rights to all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. they own D and D. They own Magic. I mean, Magic is a portion of. I mean, it came from D and D. So yeah, right. But right, I think that's yeah. why they weren't set out on doing the DLC is because. You know, so much money's yeah given back to Wizards of the Coast. I'm honestly surprised I don't hear more people talking about like Divinity One and Two mm-hmm. now that everyone's like obsessed with Boulder Skate. Yeah. I'm surprised people didn't go back and see like, oh shit, they had games like this years ago. Yeah, yeah they did. You know, but I can't wait to see what that budget is going to look like in Oh, dude, Divinity Three. Yeah. Well, that people will be, be revisiting the first two just to like see what like the universe. Oh is yeah, all they about. already are. Yeah. Shit, we need to. Yeah. So um, we started that. But question: Going back to the what's it called? The Shire. Tales of the Shire. Tales of the Shire. All right. So we established that um, graphic style is not really our cup of tea. Eleven C's. <laughs> um, not really what we want. Um, but what graphic style would you like to see it done in? Like, give me a game. It's like, oh, this game's graphic style. I don't think it's even the graphic style that throws me off. It's the, it's the it's part models. Of me. I mean, the style could definitely be better, but it, that's not like really throwing me off. The models just kind of fucking yeah, suck. You know what? I think, yeah, you're probably right. It's more so the models and just. But I would love if it was like cell shaded or. I don't know what the perfect style would be. I'd honestly love a cozy game and maybe like Hogwarts Legacy esque. Oh, just like super like realistic. Yeah, but like not overly. Well, I would love to see this trailer because um, you may be right about the models. I would love to see this trailer, but for like the PS Five. Like, show me what yeah. this game looks like yeah. on Max. True. You know, or for PC, because um, it just did look very. Potatoy, mm-hmm. <laughs> with it being um, this trailer for the Switch, but yeah, as of right now, not on my radar. Yeah, but like hey, cozy Lord of the Rings game. Like yes, this this should be good. Yeah, just not a good trailer. All right, what's next? Um, do you want to talk about Mario, Mario and the brother relationship? Um, <laughs> I really don't know what. Uh, like the trailer was pretty good. Um, game didn't look like anything super impressive nah it's just <sighs> if you are a diehard mario super mario fan you'd probably enjoy this game or i'm just like a mario and luigi game yeah fan because those games this is like the first mario and luigi game in a long time i think they said maybe like eight years uh yeah i think the last one came out uh, you know remakes aside i think the last one came out on the, the 3ds yeah but yeah yeah it didn't look like anything crazy good it didn't definitely yeah. didn't have like an odyssey budget or some shit like that definitely not definitely not um, um it just didn't look like it didn't look like an ugly game but it just didn't look like the most visually pleasing game honestly the thing that threw me off the most no charles martinet i can definitely oh, yeah, tell i, I can tell that. oh really Mm-hmm. I didn't even think about it. I mean, I will say the voice was pretty close, but I could tell it wasn't him. Yeah. But um, yeah, to go from like the, just the charming, honestly, just like impressive aesthetic of like the Paper Mario games, mm-hmm. to then show off this, yeah. it's like, mm, yeah, I don't know. I'm just I'm just not too excited. But like, I hear really good things about the Mario and Luigi games. Apparently, they're funny as hell. They've got the you know a lot of charm to them, but I don't know. Maybe maybe again it was just the trailer. Yeah, it's just not the greatest trailer. Yeah, I mean I'm not yeah. a diehard Mario the name guy I hate. anyway. I hate the name. Yeah, Mario and Luigi Brothership. I don't know. Just something about it's just could have just been Brotherhood. 
But I, I guess it's better. hitting on the whole ship thing and like going yeah, to the is islands. True. Yeah. Like I I get it, but I don't know. Just I don't I don't really like it. They could have done Mario and Luigi ship <laughs> 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 Um That would have been uh, that would have been really cool. Like <laughs> ship hoot den or something. I don't know. And it, there's like a owl in there too. Yeah. But that would have been really funny. <laughs> Ship who did? I don't know. Um, next, next, um, we had the final trailer from this, and then we're gonna hit on the really cool one. But the final it. trailer that was shown was the remake of Metroid Prime Four, which they're calling Beyond. Oh no, th- this is just Metroid Prime Four. It's not, it's not a remake. Oh wait, really? I thought Metro yeah. Prime Four was already a thing. Mm-mm. I mean, uh, there's I probably wrong? like a fourth installment of like the Metroid games, but in like uh, the Prime series, damn, I where swore. it's like the FPS. Yeah. Oh, okay, this is just the fourth game that we've been waiting for. Well, people have been waiting for for so long. Damn. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I thought that was a remake. Yeah, because you had the first one on the GameCube. I think you had two and three both on the the Wii. Mm-hmm. And then since then, we had not got a fourth. Yeah. Prime game. Hmm, that's cool then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that comes out 2025. Uh, the trailer looked pretty, pretty good. Uh, I'm not a big Metroid fan by any means, but this gave me like OG Halo vibes. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind because um, they did port the original Metroid Prime over to the Switch, enhanced it a little bit. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind trying that out because I always hear really good things. Yeah. Did you listen to the Remember the Game episode of that? Mm, yeah. It's possible. That was one that Adam really enjoyed. But, um, yeah, I, I always hear really good things about the original GameCube game, so I wouldn't mind trying it out. So who knows? So, yeah, Maybe that's uh, Metroid Prime 4, if you're into that. Yeah, and they ended with that, so I'm sure a lot of people were hyped. Yep, and we're ending it with this. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Ah, oh, this was so cool. So, like most people, I'm sure... I even seen a reaction video and they were thinking the same. I think a lot of people were thinking this was going to be a link to the past, Mm -hmm. but redone in that same kind of links awakening remake. Yeah, they started out like you would think it was. Yeah, they showed Ganon. They showed. I think it was probably purposefully done. Yeah, um, which is really smart. But that's awesome. That's honestly a sick opening fighting Ganon. Yeah, and then what happens? Because this is actually I don't know if this is the first game. Where you exclusively play Zelda, but I want to say it is. Um, or I shouldn't I say mean, exclusively because you play. I, was say, I guess we don't quite know if it's exclusive yet. Yeah. Um, because that could just be a cutscene in yeah. the beginning. That's I'm not true. too sure. But yes, no. This is. I I mean, you can play as like Zelda and like the fighting ones. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But um. Yeah, I want to say this is the first game that we get like Zelda as the lead. This is truly yeah. the first Legend of Zelda yeah. game. This Literally. is this is her legend. We're finally seeing what her legend is all about. Thirty plus years later. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> finally. And, uh, what's cool about this is you aren't playing um like a melee Zelda. Mm, mm-hmm. You're playing mm-hmm. Zelda using wisdom. Yes. Um, so she has like a staff that she can use and it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but the way that, what it made me think about is again, it's the same graphic style and look as the Link's Awakening remake. Yeah. So it's that like isometric style and like a cutesy chibi esque. Yeah. Very chibi, but it's given you that same kind of like tears of the kingdom sandbox way of mm-hmm. solving puzzles and like fighting. Yeah. Which Be- is awesome because you're able to like clone items and enemies and all these different things. And yeah. you kind of like, it looks like you can summon them at will Yeah, to like solve puzzles to like jump on this or get across this or to like summon this bad guy to then beat up these other bad guys. Yeah. And just the way that it was a really good trailer. Um, just the way that they showed it off, it seems like that's like a huge mechanic. And again, just like solving puzzles and combat itself. I can't remember if she actually had her own dedicated attack because that was mainly what they were showing off. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I would imagine so just yeah. to get out of certain situations. But and in like 
like a lot of the games, the Smash Bros. Especially, she has like a roster of like attacks and yeah. stuff. So, uh, but yeah, it's Magic. definitely pretty similar to like Tears of the Kingdom in regards of like everybody's path to the end is not going to be quite the same. Mm-hmm. So you were going to be able to do puzzles differently than other people would. Yeah, which is fucking sick. I love it's that. Like figure it out the way that you can. Yeah. you know, figure it yeah. out. But yeah, you can. How did you get through the water temple? You know that whole yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everybody had to do it the same way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it wasn't that hard. <laughs> All you do is summon three beds, get on top, and then jump in. I don't know, whatever <laughs> <Yeah>. it is. <laughs> but, Recall. Um, it yeah no, it looked really cool, and like I seen this one post. That someone was pointing out, I guess they took a screenshot from the uh, the trailer. I'm guessing it was from the trailer. But it was showing the Zora. And it was showing a chibi version of, like, Zora as we know them to look from, like, Breath of the Wild and, like, Tears of the Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Zora from, like, the older games. And it was like, what's going on here? We have two different types of Zora. So it's, like, either two different types of tribes or, like, are we, like, meshing... The different like timelines or something. Uh, What's going on here? And in the beginning, when you see Link, it looks like he's wearing his Tears of the Kingdom, like kind oh, of yeah. like, you know, like the heroes. What is it called? Like garb the heroes' or garb or something. Yeah. That is interesting. I didn't really, I didn't think about that at all. Yeah. Oh, I so, wonder what that is. I don't know if that's just the aesthetic they were just happened to be going for, and it was coincidence. But it looked like a chibi version of it. Yeah. Um. So. Hmm. Yeah, not too sure, because obviously this is a new installment. This isn't like a uh, remake. Yeah, I'm curious anything. if this will be canon or not. We're starting a whole new timeline, <laughs> Honestly, <brother>. <laughs> This is actually um, part of the Ocarina of Time. Yeah. There was actually a fourth timeline. <laughs> Let us dig into it. Yeah. Um, but yes, that comes out September 26th with, an, or not, uh, not with, but... It also is dropping with an exclusive Switch Lite, which is fucking stupid. Not even um, uh, OLED. That's what I'm saying. Like, who's still fucking buying these? I guess, again... You know Austin John's getting one. That's what it is, though. That's what they're hitting on. And they're like, hey, at this point, everyone knows we're going to have a new fucking console next year. Yeah. Like, that's just... Just fucking push these out one more time. Mm -hmm. Push the cheap ones out. Yeah. Um, they'll, they'll go on sale. Yeah. We'll put them on sale at the end of the year too. We'll have, we'll have some bundle. <laughs> um, buy this. You pretty much get the game free. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, but that's pretty much what they're doing. Yeah. Cause no one who is going to play this game doesn't have a switch, mm-hmm. you know? So they are doing it for the fucking collectors. Um, but yeah, like come out with yeah. an OLED version at least. I know. It's crazy. Um, but, um, yeah, no, this game, this was definitely, like, pretty much the one thing um, that I was excited for, where I watched and I was like, holy shit, this looks sick. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm stoked for that. And a September release, and we're just hearing about I it. I know, it's crazy. Like, there was no, like, leaks, no rumors or anything. Why are so many games doing that now? This is like I love it though. I love it. Yeah, September. No, it's, it's sick. I get this game at the end of September. That's so soon. There's just like no anticipation on shit no more. Yeah. Lately. A lot of but these I mean, games are. But the thing is, you can you can do that with a Zelda game. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. thing yeah. is it will if, sell. If PlayStation was like, hey, new God of War dropping in two months, it's gonna get the same exact amount of sales. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's like fucking God of War, it's such a huge just franchise. Yeah. Um, so they can get away with that. And you save money, like not having to fucking advertise for fucking years. Yeah, Funko so Fusion comes out tomorrow. Who's buying it? <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. Exactly. Uh-oh. Um, But that's it. That's all I got. That's all I got too, buddy. What are the odds? It's, uh, I don't know, one to one? That's all we got. Um, um, well, I think that does it for what we have on just like the summer of gaming summer games fest yeah for just from what i recall i don't know if we missed any major ones or not 
Um, um, I'm sure there was some like if I if we did some deep digging, there's there's probably a, a few like smaller games that probably look pretty cool that we that we didn't mention. Yeah, yeah, for sure. As far as like bigger games, like AAA for sure. I think that about covers it all. Yeah. All um, the exciting stuff, anyways. Yep. Uh, I think they're. I don't know. We might get some more uh, cool shit here in another month or so. I was hoping uh, the Nintendo, yeah, the Nintendo Direct had some Pokemon shit, but not a single ounce of it. Yeah, not even a mention. I, because when you sent me that, the whole like, hey, there's a Nintendo Direct tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Like I knew we weren't gonna get Pokemon stuff because yeah. we would have heard about that weeks ago. Yeah. Like, hey, there's gonna be one, uh, towards the end of June, and there's gonna. They're going to talk about a Pokemon game like we already know. You know, there would there would have been some type of news out about it already. Yeah. Um, And they did hit us with some pretty big, you know, Pokemon news, obviously, back in February. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what they would even have said. I just I, want I, an I, update. I, I mean, yeah, it, I, it's definitely too early for an update on that new Legends game, though. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? I think end of the year at the latest, but if not, then next February. For sure. Yeah. Um, but that does it. Episode 86 of the Hardcore Podcast. This has been episode 86 of the Hardcore Podcast. Signing I out. I used to work for the Shadow Agents. <laughs> <laughs> but then they lied to me. You opened the box and I came. Now they have to die. John Wick style. You killed my dog. I used to work for the Shadow Agency, and they killed my dog.